What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode number 63 of the King's Speech Podcast with Trevor and Josh, the podcast you can relate to, learn from, and laugh at from two guys who realize the streets and the club only look fun on television, and they probably are full of COVID. They're definitely COVID full. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. COVID's everywhere. And I realize that the streets aren't fun in New York because it's too damn cold here. Oh, it's cold as ass. Okay, it's too damn cold. You can't even have fun in the streets if you wanted to. I don't even know how people live here. <laughs> Crazy, you know what I'm saying? You should just like move to Florida or something. Something yeah, so like, where where all the COVID where all the COVID is, because COVID keeps Florida warm. That's why it's warm all year round. Ooh, hater! Come, Indeed, you're gonna come down and visit, and you're gonna be like, "Wow, this is I am. this is good I COVID." Am. I I've been. Our COVID I was... is way better than New York COVID. I will tell you that much. <laughs> if, we're, if we're gonna talk about which strain of COVID is better, the Florida, I'd rather destroy Florida strain. Roll that bad boy right up. I was going to work uh, yesterday morning and was just thinking I need a vacation. I need some. Oh my Need God. to be somewhere warm. Oh my God! Speaking of which, I have to talk to you about that too. Yeah. But yeah, definitely need a vacation. Boy, you just came back from Costa Rica. And before you went to Costa Rica, you actually had more vacations than I did last year. I'm a flight attendant, so actually, I'm not even going to sit here and nod heads with you. Like you need, boy, I need a vacation. Copy that. I'm, Copy that. Yeah, you was in Costa Rica with your shirt off. I was in Costa Rica, and then weeks before ago, that, like two weeks ago, it was more than two oh, weeks. Three. <laughs> it feels when it's 28 degrees. It feels a whole lot Yo, the more memory, than the memory. The memory goes two away. Two weeks ago, You're absolutely. Right. How was your week? I mean, I didn't storm anything. <laughs> I didn't storm Yo, any capitals intense. or anything you like stayed, that. You stayed home. I Yo, stayed actually, home. Let me ask you a question. Since someone who's been to the Capitol within the last eight months. Yeah. When you went, mm-hmm. did, did you even feel like an inclining that, hey, maybe I should just scale this building? No, I, I, I controlled myself. Yeah? <laughs> there was some, you applied self-control? There was some restraint there. Um, uh, what, this is good, actually. This is really good because you were there. Um, where, did you feel like... Um, were you were you so disturbed in your soul that you were like I, I lose all sensibility and I just no everybody I just was break the glass of the Capitol building and sit down at people's desks was that like your energy I mean you know we were there actually you know demonstrating for people that were murdered in the street right so like a but real still cause and a real we reason? yeah but still Not we didn't feel the urge to you know bust through the windows and put our feet up at somebody's desk and. And steal their mail. That was never our yeah, was, uh, our motivation. And the and you actually saw fa- like you heard from the families who lost. Yeah, they were right? speaking. They were speaking. Did they? they were, did no. They, did they? Did they? Did they do anything wild or crazy? They actually like walked up to the microphone in an orderly fashion and expressed how they felt to us. Respectfully. Very respectfully. Calm. Calm. Peaceful. Yeah. Right. Of course, it was emotional, but you it's know, emotional for sure. There's this thing called self control. Self control. So they applied it. They applied self control the entire time. Well, safe to say that African Americans do know how to behave themselves in large crowds. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes, sometimes, sometimes. I mean, you know, unless they playing, you know, pop smoke. <laughs> unless pop, comes, <laughs> you know, like, unless they're playing go. pop smoke. Then you um, go. But yeah, of course, we're gonna just we have a lot on the docket today. We want to definitely get everything in in the amount of time where you guys will still be engaged. Um, so we're gonna, <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna get to it. Um, last week I started off with my two topics, so Josh is gonna start off with his topics. Wow. This week, wow. uh, what you got for the people, them? Well, man, uh, I also, that, did we talk about how, like, not being on Instagram, you, I need, I really need to, I really need to find my, my news sources. But yes. it's cool because, like, now I'm getting to read, like, real articles of, like, real things going on in the world. So it's, like, a different form of consumption of the news. It's actually kind of, like, very uh, TBT. So no Busted Challenge for you? Yo, I just saw the Busted Challenge was yesterday because my sister and, uh-huh. like, my fiance were like, all the girls are doing this, all of my... I'm like, what's on your timeline? And then they started showing the Busted Challenge, and I was like, thank God I'm not on Instagram because... Shorties are busting it right now. They are busting it. On all platforms, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram. Yeah. Bust it. Shorty. Indeed. We got to change the definition of what a challenge is. That's not a challenge. Have you ever tried to do a choreographed dance? Because let me tell you something. I don't, I, like, yes, that's not a challenge. I've but never tried to do a choreographed re- dance yeah, in my life. Yeah, we, well, Trevor, not the dancer. <laughs> never, ever. But, yo, those challenges are very difficult. I remember doing the Tootsie Slide um, for, not for TikTok, but because my friend's sons were having a birthday. And they, oh, yeah, it's because of your friend's sons. Yes, it was. That's why, that's the only reason why I Tootsie Slide. That was slide. the only motivation. No, literally, I was so against it. You might not think that, but I really was against it. And, um... It was very difficult to get on beat for that titsy slide. So I can only imagine what it is to do all those TikToks and busted challenges. But hey, ladies, I'm glad you guys are having fun. <laughs> but my topics are nothing about those. Um, I kind of wanted to talk about Hillsong back in the news this week. <laughs> oh, man. Not again. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> okay. Can I just tell you? 
I know you don't like Drake. I don't know why this has become like a Drake versus Drake con- uh, podcast, but when I heard Drake say, oh, man, uh huh, and that beat drop, that might have been the greatest thing I've ever heard. Oh, man. Like that, oh, man, not again. What go on with your story, please. <laughs> Yo, you. <laughs> not the greatest thing you've ever heard. Not the greatest thing I've ever heard. I gassed it, but like, that was like, I remember that moment vividly. Like, like for Drake, that was a big moment. Not, all right, whatever, cool. Hillsong's back in the news. Um, their lead pastor out of Sydney, Australia, uh, Brian Houston, his wife, I think her name is Bobby. Her name is Bobby. Um, yeah, she's yeah, a white woman named Bobby with nope, short hair. Nope. nope. Yeah, the Bobby. Women, yeah. Their dog's name is Bondi. Okay, so his wife, Bobby, also a pastor. I just want to say every single white woman with the name Bobby has short hair. Yeah, of course. They have the nasty Everyone. trailer park cut. Yeah. Ugh, the, okay. Can I just tell the folk them that that trailer park cut with the uh, highlights and the swoop over? <laughs> okay. So um, they're back in the news again because his wife recently did an interview and she was talking about, and they're like 66, 65. They were mm-hmm. talking about their sex life. Okay. Um, and they're the lead pastors of Hillsong. And if you know Hillsong, Hillsong's a big conglomerate in the Christian community. And for me, I was just kind of like taken back by this story only because... It made the headlines. Um, over here on DailyMail.com in the UK, they're talking about the life of this pastor and their sex life. And I just don't think those are the things that can be highlighted from the church. I think we can <laughs> highlight other things. Like I what? Think, I think the church does a lot for our communities. I think the church does a lot. For our communities? or th- I think the church... Or for their community. Well, I, as I was talking about the as a Christian community, so I, I, I group myself in that, so I think the church does a lot for the Christian communities. Um, this particular church or just church in general? This particular church, for sure, okay. but church, like, this, this church does things all across the globe for like to impact lives in third world countries, impact lives with food, clothing, mm-hmm. and whatnot. So those are like great things, right? Like I don't want to hear about the pastor's sex life. Why not? Well, besides the fact that they're 66 and 65, I, well, that's not sexy. I'd love to be getting it in at 66 and 65. I mean, absolutely. 65. I would love to, and I'm glad that they are. Yeah. But I don't think that needs to be what, we, what we're rapping about. I don't, I don't I don't think it needs to be at the forefront. No. But, uh, like, they, listen, like, these are real people, right? They are real people. And they're in a real marriage. Yes. And in a real marriage, sex is a part of that marriage. Yes. And for a lot of people, it's a very important part of that marriage. And if it's something that's lacking, it can really affect the marriage. These are all great things. I agree with you. So, like, if we are, like, if they are heads of a church and they are, of course, promoting marriage, a big part of marriage is sex. It is. It is. It is. I just, the way they're making it, the way the the, the article is kind of portrayed is just like, I, I there's two sides to this, right? Like, I just feel like we are only seeing Hillsong in the news for nasty shit nasty shit and i don't want to see that now am i saying that pastors sh- uh, should not talk about sex absolutely not i think it's actually very important because we also appreciate like you're supposed to like have one woman or one partner for the rest of your life so that's going to be a very important thing to talk about so it better be good right? so it better be good so i do agree <laughs> but those are the things that we should talk about in the church and at home and i just don't think like we need to make it because the whole article is like look at the pastor staying in shape to to be to be fit for his wife it's like nah like that's not what, come on, that's not the news for me. You know, listen, I feel like in churches, there are real people. There are real, you know, people with real issues and real flaws. Uh, I'm not saying this is a flaw at all. I'm just saying, like, there are real people no. with real issues that run churches that get up, put their pants on one leg at a time, eat their oatmeal, kiss their wife, pet their dog, whatever, right? And this is a part of that. And I am, I'm not upset that she chose to spoke to speak about you know their vibrant or their energetic sex life it kind of encourages people to want to be married and to want to be a unit and to want to make it work with your partner um that's that's how i that's how i see it and they're they're in their 60s they've probably been together for what like 25 plus years and things can get a little stale for sure for sure some dudes like uh like homeboy here in new york they step out (laughs) Or some dudes just make it work. You know what I'm saying? Uh, okay, so, so is this is this is this Hillsong's uh, cover up? Is this like is this, this is Hillsong is this their, being like? Is this their media glaze over? They're like, no, no, no. Don't share your wife, but 
stay fucking. Yeah, you don't gotta go always. find some some young <laughs> congregant or some young you know member of your church or patron of your church. He you found can her at the park. Be well, she. Oh well, yeah, he did find her yeah, at the park. Yes, yeah, she. Yeah, park. yeah he, <laughs> that's he, nasty. He, he, <laughs> hey, hey, he got his bag. He was walking in the park, seen Jordy on the bench that is so with her nasty. dog, and just pulled up. Anyway. Yeah, so but I, just, I think this is a, a good contrast to going outside of your marriage to find some excitement as opposed to just finding the excitement in your marriage no, with your, you know, with your spouse. I definitely agree. I would like to just see more other positive things cuz I like I like I know what churches do for people worldwide. Yeah, but and so, like, you know, sex sells. The salacious shit is what gets I headlines. I know, I know, but in Christianity sex shouldn't be selling. It's the works. I, I I get I, I feel you on that. You're 100 percent right with that. Indeed. But, but that's how I feel. I just I just thought that was interesting. But like Hillsong's back in the news. Let's hope they stay out. Um, the next thing I did have was Netflix. Man, Netflix basically is trying to take over. Like, well, they're trying to reclaim their title, right? We have seen HBO Max came out. Mm-hmm. They partnered with a lot of different um, networks, and and they put it out a lot of. Great content, and then we see uh, Disney Plus also giving us great content, mm-hmm. and then they're like, "Damn, like Netflix is falling off, falling off." Well, guess what? Twenty twenty one, Netflix has a star studded lineup. Ooh, every month, stars. Star- We're talking stars. We got uh, Zendaya dropping with a, with a new movie with uh, John David. Oh, I did. I would. I want to watch Black that. Black and White, which yeah. is pro- I, I feel like we got to see that. We got to see that. So, we got. We also got to. Re- at some point in this episode, we have to reference the comment that was left on our. Uh, on one of our YouTube videos about our take on Candace Owens and Netflix, I'm gonna break that down. I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you take care of that because my <laughs> response to that wasn't media trained, so we're just working right through it. But um, yeah, man, Netflix has a star-studded um, lineup coming up, and I was gonna ask you: just are you off Netflix, or are you looking forward to what Netflix has to offer? I'm still on Netflix. I'm the kind of guy that likes to rewatch a lot of shit, mm-hmm. so I'll rewatch old sitcoms and comedies and movies. Um, when it comes to Disney Plus, I try to like watch at least a Marvel movie a week. Um, really? Yeah, that's that's like I, I just like revisiting things that I like. You know, I, I like looking at things. I'm the same with with music. If something has some really great replay replay value, I will run that shit into the ground. I, run, I ran King's Disease into the ground all all last year, and whatever new really? hot shit comes out this year, I'll run it into the ground again. So. You know, and it is hard to find stuff on Netflix these days. It's harder than it has been in the past. Not necessarily looking forward to watching any movies with The Rock, Um, but with Halle (laughs) Berry. You're a hater. You're not actually. You're not trying to look at his new show. Um, It's like it's like it's like Little Rock. The Rock doesn't make good movies. It's Little Rock. He has he has a new show on NBC. Is coming out about Little Rock. I'll probably watch that. That'll probably be entertaining. But I don't like rock. I don't like the rock movies. Like the rock and Kevin Hart combination is not it for me. That's not it. You don't like that. They're, no. they're not. They're not the best thing since sliced bread. No, they are not. Absolutely not. They're yeah. probably the worst thing since sliced bread. <laughs> but they I'm looking forward run. to. I see they got like some Ryan Reynolds action. He's funny. Some Chris Hemsworth. I love Thor. Haley Berry making uh, a little comeback. Halle Berry. Ooh, baby girl, she still looks. Yeah, she's she's aging like wine. Yeah. Aging like wow. Wine. Take Melissa notes. McCarthy aging like yogurt, but I'll, she's funny, so I'll still watch. <laughs> yogurt is gross. <laughs> she's yeah, aging man. like tapioca. Oh, just lumpy. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man, I am. Um, I do need to challenge myself to tap back into Netflix. I wish I had the appetite to just see something that may not have the names, the star-studded names. Mm-hmm. That we normally look for the blockbuster names and just give into that. So I'm gonna challenge myself to just start finding new things, especially like on the career path that I'm choosing. I need to really tap into that. So uh, yeah, man, I'm excited for what Netflix has to offer, and I'm not really happy about their price um, anymore. Yeah, their prices have gone up. Yeah, I think it's what the lowest, the cheapest plan right now is thirteen ninety nine. Oh yeah, twelve ninety nine and thirteen ninety nine. Yeah, twelve ninety nine. Yeah, but they have to do that because they have all their movies are really big budget. You know, and yeah, they gotta give it up. They have a how lot of money? stars. They raise our prices. That's how they make money. <laughs> it can't just be up to twelve ninety nine subscriptions. It's because, all of that, and because I know three people with my password. I mean, but that's so you and you know two people with your password. I know two you know people saying? with mine. Yeah. So it's just like I just don't. I just want to know how they really get the bag. I think it's. I think it's the raising the prices with subscriptions, oh, and then no one has my password. Sorry, Netflix. And then it's. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's also, you know, the money they generate from from these movies that they produce, you know, yeah. or maybe they like sell 
different movies to different studios or production companies or or whatever. You know, they're doing a, a decent job of staying profitable. Yeah. And honestly, like you like bringing up this story about all these stars that are coming to Netflix now. Now next year is going to be seventeen ninety nine, and the year after that is going to be eighteen. It's going to no, go up. It's going to yeah. go up like rent. It's going to go up. No, I'm also still paying for cable, and it's 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 a very tough thing. That it's a tough tough thing. I've right I've progressively gotten used to not having cable. <sighs> progressively, it's still hard because I still want to like come in, just turn on the TV. But no, I got to come in, either turn on the fire stick or turn on my Xbox. I don't like then it. Then find something, and I can't just like. There's no guide. And then when I want to watch a Knicks game, I have to pull it up my computer and then... Um, Put the HDMI in the drone? And then uh, Oof, mirror it to my TV. And then I do... And then I, do I watch it like that. Yeah. You got to teach me. I'm, you know I'm not tech savvy. Yeah. I'm yeah. as good as my mom with tech stuff. I've, oh, wow. Yeah. I'm, 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 like, I'm getting... I'm getting I'm my getting mom better. might be better at tech than you. <laughs> she might be. I'm working on it. <laughs> I had Kim install the um, Alexa and the smart lights. Because I got so frustrated that I just left it there. I was like, babe, can you please? You can't give up. Don't give up. Don't oh, give up. Don't give up, he says. Don't give up. Oh, man, when it doesn't work, it doesn't work. That's it. <laughs> that's it? No, that's not it. <laughs> that's it, man. Oh, man. What do you got for the streets? All right. So, um, of course, we're going to get to the, you know everything that happened last week. Um, but first, more salacious shit. Kim and Kanye, they might be getting a divorce. A source at page six, at page six is reportedly stating that the final straw for Kardashian's decision was to move forward with the divorce. Who's was the West source? 2020 Who's the source? presidential run. Who knows? Who knows? Um, it can be assumed that, like many, Kardashian wasn't here for Kanye's remarks about Harriet Tubman and the slaves. West also referred to Kardashian's mom, Kris Jenner, as Kris Jong-un, which I think is hilarious <laughs> on this Twitter. Was, or this was when he was in his episode. <laughs> this was during his episode. Oh, yeah, Absolutely. After she suggested that he um, seek yeah. psychiatric treatment, um, yeah, I'm with him. Um, That's actually. Do you really think they're really getting divorced? Ah, can't call it. I don't know. I think they are. Who the, who, who's the source? Who knows? Who but knows? I do think that I, I do think they're getting divorced. I do think it was only a matter of time, just based on like Kanye's behavior. Yeah, I mean, maybe... listen, Kim is Kim has gone longer than I thought she would, and Kanye has gone a little bit more off the rails than I thought he would. So I'm actually very impressed that Kim is still here, but they have four children together. You know what I'm saying? So like, I know they have a lot of money between both of them, blah, 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 blah. But like, four kids is four kids. So I want to, I don't know, man. I don't, I don't know where they end up. Um, I hope it works out for both of them. <laughs> four kids is four kids, but you can't stay in a marriage if you're not happy. Because then that doesn't work out for the kids. No, If both absolutely. parents are happy, then that's better for the children. Agreed. Indeed. Agreed. Uh, very, very much so. I, I definitely agree with that. I just this is just so like it's just I don't know who should the kid live. Who should the kids live with? I mean, I'm living with Kim. Okay. Ass is fat. I mean, mom. <laughs> hey, what's up? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm living with Kim Kardashian. Okay. Yeah, I'm living with Kim. Okay. If, yeah. if you're looking, so do you think we get a Kanye album out of this? No, like, and whatever he like Kanye, his version of Lemonade. We're going to get it, but it's not going to be good. I'm all, <laughs> you know what I mean? We're definitely getting it. I don't want it. I don't know, though, because like he's also on the, the Christian wave. So I don't know how he's going to, like, is he going to be on his, like, like this is going to be so interesting. Is his album going to be like, fuck bitches and get money again? I, he's never been fuck bitches and get money. Uh, and Kanye has never been fuck bitches and get money. He's been more. In a different way. In, yeah, actually, Kanye, I, I, would disagree, I would disagree. I don't think he's outwardly really said it, but in his raps, he's talked about. Bitches and fucking them. And he's also talked about riches, not money per se, but the riches. Yeah. So, like, the, does he the, go back to that egocentric centric, um, lifestyle or does he stay true to Sunday service? What album do we get? Do we get the Sunday, Sunday service, I'm sad and I miss my wife? I think we get the sour version of Lemonade. <laughs> like how Beyonce's was like, like delicious. Ooh, look at this like brisk lemonade on a hot day. We're going to get some like warm, pissy tasting lemonade you know, Beyonce from did Kanye. Really well. But yeah, naming her album Lemonade. Yeah, yeah, it was perfect. And dropped it when she dropped it because everyone was thirsty. What if what if Kanye names his album Raspberry Lemonade <laughs> <laughs> or Limeade? I'm, I'm, I'm listening. It's definitely Limeade, and I'm listening to it. He's doing Limeade because Raspberry sounds like a good day, like a sweet, nice day. Or like he's great not going drink. through that right now. <laughs> great drink, yeah, great drink. <laughs> <laughs> Kanye, man, I don't all know. All the best, all the best, all to the, the best to both of them to the Wests. Indeed, the West. Um, next up. 
I don't know. I, I'm going to go through both these stories. So Carrie Hilson, you know, singer, early 2000s. Um, Sing. You're turning me on. You're turning me on. That's the Carrie Hilson song that I guess people know. And oh, then um, I got my name is Carrie and I'm so yeah, Mary. Yeah. I hope that's, that's, that's So yeah, she also had the song with Kanye. That's um, a that's a bop. That's like that is knock you down. Keep knocking and keep oh, wow. <laughs> I used to be in my car. That's when I first started driving. I'll never forget. I used to be my bop. Yeah, you got you got busy like driving to a lot of it's a lot of what? Go a ahead, lot say of, I don't know. Good happy time music. You was listening to to yeah, yeah. <laughs> All that. I was listening to like love. I was ready for love. You were ready. Okay. All right. Simp. Sim ah, man. Big okay. Simp. Big I could, simp. Yeah, I can see that. Anyway. I mean, your hair looks good today, kid. Thank you. You got some length. Thank you. Are you locking? No. Soon? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I want to do with my hair. Are you locking? I don't know what I want to do with look, my hair I'm trying at this all. new little lock thing. I'm pushing the jaw back. I got some length. Just like that, you get some length. We'll see. See how it goes. Anyway, back to <laughs> Carrie Hilson. Back to Carrie. Um, Carrie was apparently the only person on the planet only black only person with melanin on the planet that was mad that Donald Trump was banned from Twitter um she said while social media was celebrating Donald Trump's Twitter ban Hilson took to Instagram where she questioned if it was ethical to limit the sitting president's freedom of speech she says a democracy must include freedom of speech imagine other leaders or popular figures not being able to voice their opinion if it opposes the majority of the world leaders our freedom of speech is being taken away from us. Carrie, it's Twitter. Yeah. It's a private company. The they same can do whatever the fuck on. they want. God damn. They can do whatever they want. They can ban who they want. They can promote who they want. Like, Trump is a president. Carrie, right? this, this thing's your don't... president. You've been living here in the last four years. Carrie, what world have you been living in? This is what people don't understand, I think, like with all these people, like an uproar about Twitter. It's, it's not like social media is big. But it's not the world. It's not the end all, be all. Like Twitter's been around to to report Twitter breaking Twitter news. Twitter's been around for fourteen years. It's been around for fourteen years. Presidents fourteen years ago ain't have a tweet to get off. Come on. So was their freedom of speech was freedom infringed of speech? in two thousand? Oh, that was good. Let's in two thousand, because there was no Twitter or no that's an you know, credible Carrie. social media. Yeah, like Carrie's an idiot. Yeah, all the motherfuckers are idiots. Now. My thing too is like, in in regards to freedom of speech, yes, Carrie, you do have the freedom to do this, right? To say what you said. Thumbs up for that. But why? Why in this climate, when you know what, what's been going on and how the entire, how half the country feels, and especially how our people feel, why would you take this time to just disagree? Just you could disagree silently. I, was, I think it's. You could have disagreed silently. I think it's cool for her to. I think it's cool for anybody to disagree. But with freedom of speech comes consequences. And when you say some dumb shit with your freedom of speech, <clears throat> you you're gonna, gonna suffer the consequences of being gunned. called an idiot. Yeah. Just like Trump suffered the consequences of, from his freedom of speech of being banned from a private company's like server. It, has Carrie was Carrie even following Donald Trump? If you were following him, then I can understand why you're upset. Why you're up in arms? If you're not following I, him, dude. You're not missing out on Twitter. I feel like sometimes some of these like old celebrities or old acts, whether they whether they be black or white, relevancy, they feel like they don't have a tribe anymore. And the easiest, dumbest, stupidest tribe there is right now are Trump supporters. Easy. So I that's the easiest. That. That's the easiest tribe to get your likes off at, or to sell your records, or to get your message heard. Easiest tribe to be a part of right now. Yeah, it requires nothing. The application yeah. is oh, is one sentence. <laughs> I support Trump. Yes, and you don't even have to spell your words right or your name right. Yeah. So <laughs> it's the easiest, like most influential, and you get a free camel gullible. Shirt. I don't people support Trump, but you do get a free camel shirt. <laughs> <laughs> no, you get a camel vest. Camo vest. Yeah. And a hat, obviously, like with the hat. A hat with the horns, like that that dumbass hat at the Capitol. Um. But yeah, Carrie, you're an idiot. Second, along those those Twitter <laughs> lines, um, Donald Trump did what a lot of what a lot of people do. He uh, tried to use somebody else's account. <laughs> I mean, I'm, yo, when he, he was he blocked, right his KD bag, he, <laughs> he got the burner. He tried to get a burner account off, but uh, the person that he tried to use the burner account with actually put Donald Trump's name in the account. Ah. So that person got their um, their Twitter account banned. Can I, are people dumb? People are stupid. Okay, cool. But this is an old move, though. Because how do you... But do why you put his name in there? He just got banned. Why would you put his name again? 
Have you ever um, used somebody else's Instagram or Twitter account to see somebody else's account? Nah, but I've I've I haven't done that, but I have inquired for someone to look at somebody else's. At account. somebody else's, have you done it for other people? Have anybody ever asked you, "Hey, like, let me look at so and so's account through your account because I'm blocked"? It might have been possible. Yeah. Is it? Is it a yes or no? I don't know. I don't. Okay. I can't. Remember. I really can't remember. Okay. Those are hairy times. <laughs> those are those were those were some really hairy times. Those are hairy times. Listen, I'm not saying that I am better than that. I just can't say or confirm or deny. And like I honestly would like you know I me, mean, I would I would love to say yes or no. Yeah. But I really can't remember if I've given I I feel like I've given my login to someone. I've been the conduit. I've never been the person that that asked to see somebody else's yes, I've been, okay, I've been, that I yes, couldn't see. Yes, I've, been I've like, definitely been the conduit. Yo, yeah, she blocked yo, she blocked me. Yo, what she post? Yeah. Yo, let me see. All right, dog. Here you go. Go ahead, boy. Here you go. I was, and I, I'd warn them. You don't want to see this. You don't want to see this. I'd warn them. This she is not going to help the you. the Busset Challenge. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need it, boy. She is actively busting it. Yeah, she's busting it. And her new. And you know who's recording it. Yeah, yeah, you know. You know who's recording. You know that that six that six five nigga from the gym. That's why the angle looked different. <laughs> You know, you know that the angle hit different. Like, oh, hold on, she got a taller nigga, and I'm five yeah. nine, so you know everybody was taller. And I'd be like, do you really want to see this? I'm like, come on, son, let me see. And I show. Come on, son, let me see. Come on, son, let me see. That's when he lost. And then I would show, and they'd be like, nah, son. That ass. Nah. Can you believe her? Yo, what is she wearing? Why is she fam, doing that? Fam, fam, she's doing the most. Doing everything. And she went out on Friday. She told me she didn't even go out, and that's when you know. You lost her. Yo, she even dressed like that with me. Yeah, King, you've been suppressing her. <laughs> <laughs> she really wants to, to show you how she really wants to be. This is who she is. This is how she really gives it up. Yeah. Fashion over. All that. Damn. Say love huh? Yo, she took him to church. <sighs> Yo, if, if, if your ex takes him to church. You can be sad. <laughs> you can be sad. And then he'll sad. give me the phone. And then he'll give me the phone. We're like, nah, son, why you showing me that? Yeah. Wh- okay, 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 okay. Okay. Don't ask me to see the phone and then ask me why. Why did I, sh- I show you that? Boy, I asked you if you sure. If you were ready. Yeah. Obviously, you were not. Nah, King. <laughs> Speaking of Kings. Talk to me about the King. Michael B. Jordan. <laughs> we got to pray for him. <laughs> that Lori. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think all of us as 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 kings ourselves <laughs> need to just like send out a prayer and some well wishes for Michael B. Jordan Why? right now, because listen, like the ceiling, the the levels of like fun and and like just pure like pleasure and fun he'll enjoy. The sky's the limit for it. But then when that nigga comes falling down without a parachute, you think she's gonna leave him? She leaves everybody. Nah, she leaves all of them. Nah. She's not. Come on, she's Mike not, and Michael she, B. Jordan is special. My, yes. Way more how? special than fu- way more special than the future. Of course, I don't understand why anybody would want to have sex with the future. Before, before, who else did she leave? Um, let's Google that. Mm-hmm. The thing is, it's like I don't understand why any woman would want to have sex with future. I don't know, man. Because there's there's dudes that have just as much money and less kids. Less kids. There's dudes that have and more less money heartbreak and less kids. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's really. I don't. I don't get it. I mean, maybe you know she was having fun, like she was drinking that purple stuff with him. Diddy also, yeah, Diddy. Ah, oh, King. See, if she left Diddy, she'll definitely leave Michael B. Jordan. Definitely leave Michael B. Jordan. Yo, <laughs> we don't know. I don't know if she really did. Did she really date Diddy? Yeah. But the thing is, you and his son. Ah, oh. Michael B. Jordan, protect your heart, King. Protect your heart. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Oh, okay. Go through the list. Go through the list. This is crazy. Okay, here we go. Go through the list. All right. So Lori Harvey first dated a Dutch football player named Memphis Depay. That was like that was like college for her. That 2017. Was junior, that was junior college for her. 2017. That was Juco. Juco. <laughs> then she in Juco. She was getting little shots up, dogging niggas in Vermont and Maine, just killing yeah, the East Coast. It's nothing. And then she was like, and then she got her D1 scholarship and got to hey. Justin Combs. Yep. That's cool, a little, little mm-hmm. lower D- D1 scholarship. But then she went to Trey Songs, and now she's like an NBA prospect. Yep. Now, now she's, yeah, she's a, a prospect. Yep. But then she wants to circle back like, yo, Justin, <laughs> the wood was good, but what you, 
what that dad do? And she went to Diddy. So then she went to Diddy. Oh boy. Which take was that, take we- that. That's crazy. And then from Diddy to Future. Yep. And then from Future to Mike B. Yep. No one has had more kings under her belt than Lori Harvey. She's taken, she's like the master chess player. Are we mad? No, nah, we're not mad at Lori. I think that Michael I'm B not, and Lori are a beautiful couple. I think this is a more mature look for her. I think Future, we knew that was a joke. Diddy, we knew that was a joke as well. Because Diddy doesn't want to I was afraid for her life when she was dating Diddy because she was just going to get, uh, what's his ogre? Cassie. No, I need, to, I need, first of all, like, Lori Harvey, we don't need to worry about her. No matter what situation she's in. She can fall from the Empire State Building right now and will land on her two feet. Land on her two feet. She's good. She's good in the hood. Queen. Listen, she does not go into these situations, I guess, like with her heart on her sleeve, apparently. I mean, we don't know, but we can speculate. We can spe- Listen. We know that she's going in with a plan, right? Unlike the Storm people. I think she likes Mike. What, what makes you say that? Because... Because the picture has a different filter, like because like because they took Polaroids. Because she's, she's gazing. Are you at Polaroids? Him. Have you taken Polaroids? No, I, we haven't taken Polaroids. We haven't taken Polaroids. You need to get a Polaroid, and then and then you, Polaroid, then it's real. It's different love. It's <laughs> it's way better than Instagram. <laughs> nah, that ass. No, honestly, I think it's a good look for her. I think it's a mature look. I think I also don't think I, th- I don't think Mike gonna let her go. That's really what it is. It's not all right. You think it's up to him? Yes. No, it's not. Mike. Who's who's? I want you to think about this who, right who now. Who are you giving? Who are you giving more power to in this relationship? Lori. Lori. Okay, that's cool. Who has all the power in your relationship? Come on. Shh. Okay. All right. <laughs> it's me. It's not you. It's not me. <laughs> it's not me, man. I gave that shit up a long time ago. <coughs> um, no, listen. I have. I have. I, I like it. I like it. I like it. I like it a lot. Protect your heart, King. If this reaches Michael B. Jordan, protect your heart, King. So, all right, listen, if Lori leaves, but like, why isn't, like, what if Lori's not the, but the problem here? Would it, and she's we not the problem. We know niggas ain't shit. We know that. Like, out of all the dudes here that she's dated, I, I don't think, know who this football player is. I think Lori but, knows that more than all of us. Right. So she cool. I, Lori, protect your heart, baby girl. No, 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 she, no her heart is protected. Her shit is like in a, <laughs> in fucking box. plexiglass. <laughs> and you can't get to that shit. Yeah, Lori different. There's an we ice never seen where her heart before. used to be. <laughs> There's an ice box where her heart yeah, used to she be. Yeah, she different. She moves different. I respect it because niggas do the same thing. So I respect it. We probably we don't do it as well as she does, and we don't have the influence or the clout to do it like she does because she looks how she looks. But I'm gonna repeat it again. Michael B. Jordan, protect your heart, King. Protect your heart. This actually is very very linked up with the Netflix thing I was talking about too. Have you seen Bridgerton yet? No, I'm not gonna watch it. I mean, yeah, you don't have to. But <laughs> remember when? Remember when we were just talking about who has the power in all the relationships? So I was just watching Bridgerton the other day, <laughs> and um, just powering through each episode. But one thing that they're, that they're highlighting is like this great-looking African-American guy with no hairline because it's back in the day. Um, <laughs> he is dating this young girl, like a Lori, for example, like the prettiest girl in all the land, right? The prize jewel, right? Is she white? Yes, but so I'm not watching Bridgerton. Continue. But, no, but but you actually should because it's more. It's, bro, it's actually it's about blacks. Okay. It's good. Okay. Um. So basically, the whole thing is like she's like dating this guy, but only for other dudes to suit her. You feel me? And so like the whole thing mm. is like, yo, I'm with I'm with Michael B. Or I'm with the best looking man in the land because other niggas will look and see and want some of that. And she and like they had an agreement so she can find her 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 dude. So I feel like Lori. Look at the dude she dates. Her, she's just always gonna get premium niggas for the rest of her life. Look at this. Well, that's the circles that she runs in. That's she's the not, circle that she. She's I not mean, dating a nigga that works at the bank. I know, man. The nigga at Chase be trying though. He be like, I'm sure I can open up a checkings and a savings for you today, Lori, Miss Harvey. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm trying all the moves. Absolutely. You know, um, yeah, I was gonna ask, but if you can't even ask that question, I'm here. <laughs> Copy that. Copy. Um, well, she but yeah, me. just protect your heart. Protect your heart, King. You think Mike B's in danger right now? I think Mike B's okay. I don't think he's in danger, danger. I mean, are you really in danger in the arms of Lori Harvey? <laughs> Nigga Trev said in the arms. <laughs> are you really in danger? Because no. that's the dynamic, though. Because Niggas really want to be in Lori Harvey's She's arms. not in his arms. He's in Absolutely. her arms, right? That's how Lori works. I think Mike B's running shit right now. I don't. 
I don't. Don't give him that much credit just because he was Killmonger. Don't give him. He's no, not I'm Killmonger not giving, in no, real I'm life. Not. I seen him get off the off the PJ and she was holding her own bags and that's why I knew Mike B was running shit. No, that's not what that means. That means he was like, "Hey, let me get your bags." She was like, "No, nah, I got it." Oh, you that's right. what that means. That's exactly what, what that, that means. means. Yes, Bro, it is. Mike B's like, "Yo, you got your bags?" All right, cool. She be like, "These might be too heavy for you." <laughs> <laughs> that nigga's in cream with his shirt off. What that mean? What that mean to her? That don't mean that's how that's how she that's the seeds that she plants to oh, establish Lord. dominance and strength off the rip. Yeah. She makes niggas bend the knee. So off the rip, it's Lori like... Lori really be making niggas bend the knee. Lori... Oh, I, had a, I have a wild analogy that I don't know if I want to say, but I'm going to say it no. anyway. Okay. Lori, Lori is like... Lori is the guy that lives in the plantation house. Okay. And Michael B. Jordan is like the group of, guy, the group of people that work the land for free. I'm not going to say what they are. But the group of people that work the land for free and never get paid. <laughs> and there's more of them than there are of the people in the big house on the plantation. But mentally, they really feel like they have no power. You really, you really have Lori in the house. Lori is definitely in the house, and there are tons of people on this land working it for free. But they don't do anything because Lori has this power, this this cloud over her that just it seems like it's it's an inter, insurmountable mountain to climb. That Lori. That Lori. <laughs> hey, listen. We've talked about it before. I Women would be, have the power. And it's cool. And, I'm, and we're fine with it. I need Mike B to give her. Never mind. Give her what? Nothing. That ain't going to change nothing. You think she hasn't already you gotten really that? You really got Lori somewhere like Lori. You not, think she hasn't gotten that already? A she baby? Just probably, she just probably doesn't. A baby? Yeah. You think she's going to have. When is she going to have. A, she's not going to have a baby. She's not gonna have a baby she's with her. She's twenty-four not... years, man. She's in her Kobe year. She is. Yeah, she's the... twenty-four. She's like, listen, she's the goat. When uh, when Meg wrote wrote the song Savage, she's... that was the inspiration. Yeah, Lori. Lori was the inspiration was, for Savage. Yeah, classy, bougie, and ratchet. Nineteen ninety-seven, class of nineteen ninety-seven. Please step forward. <laughs> you have nothing for Lori, okay? <laughs> you have nothing for Lori. See, and what? She was dating Future. Future's 37. 37 with six baby mamas. One that he's denying. All kinds of drama. So you knew that wasn't going to last long. She got engaged to that dude. Who, the football player? Yeah. That was back when she was young and impressionable and thought that relationships were about love. What is a Memphis to pay? What does this thing look like? At that point, she was looked at Memphis and was like, I'm in love with you. So that's the reason I'm going to be with you. Oh, he's like a football football player. Yeah. Oh, he's probably getting getting buckets of money playing soccer. Yeah, I could, I could, I, I see it, Lori. I see it, Lori, 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 doing well for herself. And where is this king right now? Yeah. Nowhere to be found. He probably got some fire on him. Trust me. Maybe. Trust me. But not Lori. Not Lori. <laughs> Indeed. <clears throat> so of course, last week, unless you were under a rock or storming the Capitol, um. It's cold as fuck to be doing all that. Some things happened. Um, hillbillies from uh, the forest reaches of the Midwest <laughs> and, the, and the South. Ohio. Descended upon Washington, D.C. and decided to storm some shit. Um, they weren't happy with the fact that Joe Biden is now president, even though Joe Biden has won the election about 17 times yeah, right. since November. Um, three people died. Most notably, there is a very chilling video of this Air Force veteran. Uh, I think her name is Abby or Allie or something something like that. Oh, Ashley, sorry. Woo. Ashley Babbitt, 35 years old, Air Force veteran. She got shot in the chest as she was trying to break down a door and storm the Capitol. Um, she was trying to get through a barricaded door, storm the Capitol. Um, Nancy Pelosi in her you know, ancientness and Chuck Schumer in his uh, do-nothingness. And de Blasio in his being the New York of mayorness. Uh, <laughs> I want to invoke the 25th Amendment for impeachment of Donald Trump. Or, sorry, or impeachment of Donald Trump. Um, what were you, I, I know when I like got news of this, I was kind of alarmed that this was happening, like, yeah. like, like most people were. Uh, I was kind of, uh, kind of sad that this is what our country looks like, but it, this is what our country looks like. But then I realized no black people died. And um, this is not our problem. This I was good. Problem. And I was good. Um, but like, how did you feel? Like, what do you like? What were your uh, initial feelings when this was all breaking and happening? My, do you want to know about my initial yeah. initial feeling? Absolutely. It's a safe honest? space. It's a safe space. Very safe. Nobody's gonna hear this. <laughs> <laughs> 
I, I wish I was in uniform. I wish I was an officer that worked in the state of Washington, D.C. Uh-huh. Because I needed to get some hits off. <laughs> if you really want to know, if you really, really want to know my honest, You just want like, to fuck some shit up. Yeah, like, this was a moment. <laughs> because <laughs> niggas, it's a national security, right? So, like, y'all are wilding, so you do deserve to get the licks. And I wanted to get licks off. That's how, I, and that, that was just my initial thought. Mm-hmm. But um, overall, like, more specifically, I was just like, listen, it's just funny to see how, like, two people can do the same thing. And one looks one way, and one looks the other. But in this country, if you look like the whites, mm-hmm. you can do whatever the f- whatever you want. Yeah. If you look like us, but see that's le- you know that's what I was telling you over the summer about. It was more it's more so about reaction than the offense. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like people can literally just like I told you, like on, when we were in D.C., there was the National Guard was out there. Yeah. And there was no problems. Like, no. nobody gave us any stress. No need. But they were ready. Sure. For something that they thought would pop off with hundreds and thousands of black folks. Right. Crazy. Actually marching and protesting the death of us in the street at the hands of law enforcement, un, like, unjustly, right? A very credible cause to march for and to be upset about. What did you eat after the march? What did I eat? Yeah. Where did we go? We went to a restaurant. We went to a Mexican restaurant afterwards. Me, my girl, my brother, and my cousin. We went to like a Mexican restaurant afterwards. You guys just want. You guys were in D.C. You went. You stood for what you stood for. You supported what you needed to support. And you got a meal. Great you, meal. Great meal. That burrito was home. amazing. You feel me? Yeah. Very simple. Like we, like you know what I mean. Like we just knew that we 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 went for a mission. We went we went for a purpose for an objective. Like it wasn't for naught, right? Like yeah. And it's just, it's just really, I'm just so happy at how we as a people handled it because we've seen the flip side. Now, this does not really kind of set like the precedent like, of how all white people react or whatever the case is, but there's a group that support Trump and they just feel so entitled to say whatever they want, to behave the way they want, and to like... I don't think people understand. Breaching the Capitol building is a national security issue. There are so many things that could have happened. They could have blown that building up. People had backpacks on. They could have had weapons. Some people did have weapons on them. We they don't found, know. They found cars outside the Capitol with like stuff that you can make Molotov cocktails with. We needed, um, more, we needed more. I needed more arrest. No, we needed. Niggas need to get shot. I mean, well, yes. If we're gonna have that conversation, like yes, they're I'm terrorists. With that. Yes, yes, and, and um, I'm confused. I'm confused. I'm confused. Let us storm the Capitol. There are a bunch of um, like mayonnaise face losers on social media. You know the whole like say her name, say his name hashtag. Yeah, they're trying to use that for this Ashley Babbitt girl, this white girl that stormed the Capitol and got probably what you should get when you storm a government building and try to break down barricades. These are terrorists that died. They weren't. They weren't like citizens or patriots. You know what? This to me, because they weren't citizens or patriots. They, this comes down to parenting. Right? <laughs> this whole thing comes down to parenting. Right. Because no matter how you were raised, if you were raised in a black household, somebody in that household would have let you know that certain behaviors are just never acceptable. Like, we just learn that we cannot act certain ways in public. We just learn that we cannot be, like, there's a, there's a, there's a still small voice that's like, yo, you're wild and your moms would blaze your tail if you did this. And I think because white people just don't be disciplined in their children, like, when you're mid-scaling the wall of the Capitol building, there's no small voice that's like, this is a crazy thing to do right now. Well, the same way that standards are passed down, are generational in certain families, um, so is racism. Oh yeah, and so is a, white supremacy. Yeah, so they get to a point where, as a family unit, these Trump voting families get to a point where they feel like their white supremacy is in jeopardy, and they feel like they look, they ignore certain parts of American history. They only look at the parts where, you know, we were fighting off the British for our independence, Boston Tea Party, but they lack the 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 awareness of recent history to understand that. You are still very privileged in your existence in this country, Um, even as you were back then in the 1700s when you were fighting for freedom 
and fighting for the freedom of all mankind except for the ones that you brought over on boats to work for free for the next 400 years and build this country so that you can have your affluence and your generational wealth while we just start to build that right Right now. now. Right now. So today, there is no threat to your supremacy. It's already established over 300 and 400 years of having free labor and having all the monuments, the Capitol building, the White House built by slaves for free. If you go 300 years of having your entire legacy being built and worked on for free, for the there, lot, is no, for the there is no threat to your supremacy in this land. None ever. But they feel like there's a threat because the person that they wanted to win didn't win. And then they get this this battery in their back from him about you need to show strength. And they go up there and they show their asses. And listen, all of them are terrorists. I've never we in America we've never mourned the history of a ter- we've never mourned the death of a terrorist ever. I love I love that. We've I never mourned the, the death I of a terrorist. That. When terrorists are overseas and they're brown, we don't just blow up the terrorists, we blow up their whole family. Right. We blow up the whole house they live in. We blow up the whole town why they we, live in. Why, why, won't, why won't this country view those people as terrorists? Because they're white. All right, cool. That's the only reason I can think of. And it's probably hard to come to grips with the fact that these are people that grew up in this country and claim to be patriots and have these ideals. It's hard to really like accept that this is what America is. People are surprised. When they reconvened to certify Biden's win for the 777th time, they were all saying, this is not America. This is not the America that I know. Maybe it's not the America you know, but this is America. And these are the people that feel disenfranchised for whatever reason, and they have a battery in their back, and they feel like it's okay to run up in a Capitol building with weapons and potentially blow. They could have blown up that building. Easy. With with and 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 the cops, and there was a police officer there that died, and they say that they backed the blue, you know, blue lives matter, all this bullshit. I haven't seen one police organization come out and mourn the death of this Capitol police officer that died. During this during this riot, on on this side on this side for sure, I haven't seen it. Not alone. one. So it's, what? So when that happens, you understand what it's really about. We know what it's about. We gotta just. We just gotta just keep doing what we're doing, handle things the way we know best, and let them keep showing their asses, bro. They show their asses in the way they treat people. They show their asses in the way they behave. They show their asses in the way they lose. They just show their asses every day. I just need some accountability. That's it. I need oh, all well, of these guys. I need all of them to go to prison well, for no the next twenty five years. Nobody takes accountability. I think every single person that uh, that like breached that perimeter, every single Capitol police officer that escorted them in, twenty five years, like minimum. That'd be nice. I'm with it. Minimum. Push that. We need that. That that's how. That's the precedent that because needs to be how, set. Because how? What? I just want to know what. I just want to know what it would be. If it was the other way, there okay. wouldn't even be a need for us to go to prison because we'd all be dead, right? The the national Yo, guard would be out there just spraying, spraying like it was Call of Duty. Yeah, like so. What are we? What are we? <laughs> I love Call of Duty. I, mean, I, I haven't. know you do. I haven't stopped playing Call of Duty since quarantine happened. I know you haven't. <laughs> <laughs> I know you haven't. You know um, who else knows you haven't? Kim. <laughs> she knows, but I think she's accepted that. Okay. Yeah, because you know, better to be home playing the game than in these streets. in these streets. Yes, sir. You ain't going out in these streets. I'm either. never going to the streets. <laughs> never. But um, no, seriously, I just think like it would have been so different, and and that's really sad because that just shows us that equality is not really a, a real thing. No, nah, it, it it's not. Um, in theory. And the thing is, is like, if you're gonna storm the Capitol, right? At least be re- be prepared, right? Be in better shape. Like some of the people that died, they died from heart attacks because they were too fat. <laughs> Did you see the video of the guy climbing the the the, the wall and then he just fell down? No, because he couldn't make it to the top. No, they put like super they put Super Mario video game music behind it, and when he fell, it was like do 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 do. If you're gonna storm some shit, be in shape. Make sure it's muted. I got you. Okay, like be in shape. Now it's not muted. Now it's not muted. You yo, yo, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Trevor's trying to expose my tech savvy, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and like one person died of a heart attack. Uh, there was this old lady that was there, also. Like, if those are the people that you have to storm the Capitol, oh. yeah, you've already lost. Boom, right? Jeez, it's 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 just not okay. Yeah, I'd be so tight if I fell. <laughs> Why? 
He's like, oh man, storm over. Ah oh, shit, I fell. Storm's over. Hey guys, I fell. Pain. Hey guys, I fell. Guys, dad, they weren't even organized. They're just so they're just so trash. Guys, I fell down. I guess I'll try to storm tomorrow. Yo, the dude who um got arrested for sitting in uh Pelosi's Pelosi's seat. Pelosi's seat. Yeah. Pelosi's seat. He took a selfie. Yes, he did. But he's seventy. He's the only one I give an excuse to. I don't give in. I don't give them any. Listen. They're just, they're idiots. They're all idiots. Because he's going to go to jail for a while. Right, right. He's going to go to jail for a long time. Yeah, he's finishing life. But like, I mean, like, he already lived a full life. So he's the only one, like, out of all the things, like, it's like, all right, cool. Like, I get it, oh, hey. You lived the entire life, go do something wild, and spend the rest of your life in jail. But you know what I've noticed also, even, uh, because I have a lot of experience with, like, young- Scaling walls? Young people. No, I have no experience scaling any walls. (laughs) Never scaled a wall in my life. Uh, Don't anticipate I'll ever need to. Nah, don't see I hope not. Yeah. For what? Um, Because I have a lot of experience, like, you know, in Nassau County, Suffolk County with people like that and younger people, like in their 20s, um, like early, like late teens, stuff like that. And they are like actively trying to like fight off the old racism of their grandparents and their parents. And a guy like this, Richard Barnett, he probably has a granddaughter or a grandson somewhere who's looking at this shit. And they're like, you're shaming my family. Yeah, man. Because I actually like black music and Drake. Don't do not do that. I love Lamar Jackson. He's so yeah, fast. Yeah, Lamar, Lamar. <laughs> he's, he's whining he's so fast. Yeah. No, that's another thing too, man. You all just dumb shit like your family. Like, what about your family? They don't think I think about, about my family that. all the time. The thing is, this Ashley Babbitt girl, like they asked her, um, like her parents had no idea she was going. She had an ex husband that didn't know that she was going to do this wild shit. And it's like, and then she goes there to do this wild shit. And she, now she's dead because she's a terrorist. And terrorists get shot in, the, and shot in the chest or blown up. She's lucky her whole house didn't get blown up. That's right. what that's what happens Who to terrorists are you overseas. With? Right. And I feel like, honestly, I'm, this is extreme. I feel like every Trump supporter or Trump voter should be considered a terrorist. <laughs> He did say it was going to be extreme. I said that at, at the did, beginning of the that, sentence. So that's very fair. And I, and I think I think with that being said, I agree with that. Because your, <laughs> your votes and your support put this man in this position. And then he encouraged people who are terrorists to commit a terrorist act. Ipso facto, one plus one equals two. Three plus three equals six. Oh, okay, math. You're a terrorist. Terrorist. Boom. They are terrorists. They are terrorists. Indeed. You got to chill, man. Just take your L, dog. And let Biden send that good, good 2,000 stimulus, guys. Take- <laughs> and forgive the 10 bands. Please. I take, love listen, Biden already. Take your L. Go back home to your double watch trailer. Have a jelly sandwich for dinner. Watch old episodes of Roseanne. And shut the fuck Ham, up. Ham, cheese, mayo. They don't have meats. <laughs> no, they, Mayonnaise sandwiches. No, the Arby commercials are for whites. Arby's. Are they? What black people go to Arby's? I don't know black people that go to Arby's. In the South. Okay. Yeah. I know people that love Arby's in the South. I know, I know they'd be going to Bojangles. That's Where's Bo, what's Bojangles? I don't know where Bojangles is. Chicken spot. Okay. In DC. Copy DC that. Area. Yeah. It's like Popeye's. It's not crazy, but that's <laughs> where we go. Awesome. Yeah. So that's our uh, our take on the whole like capital thing. You're all terrorists. You're all go to jail for the next 25 years. If not, be, you know, like succumb to a firing squad or a public hanging. Remember public hangings? Back in the 1700s and the 1800s. Remember when, remember when people didn't behave and you hung them? And you hung them just for no reason? <laughs> oh, she's a she's a whore. Remember when <laughs> Hang you her. Like, she's a witch. With a letter. Burn her. Yeah. <laughs> take it back. Take it back. Take it back. Yeah, take it back. Hang the terrorist. He whistled at a white woman. Burn him. Yeah. Apply the same thing. Reverse. Seems uh, Seems appropriate to me. Seems very logical to me. Yeah. Indeed. All right, y'all. So next up for our social slash like relationship topic, I was thinking the other day, who takes relation, who takes rejection better, men or women? Men. Mm. And then I thought the same thing. Mm-hmm. I was like, men, we take rejection better because most of our lives dealing with women is rejection. Hey, can I get your number? No. Hey, can I buy you a drink? No. Go. Keep going. <laughs> Keep fucking going. Hey, can hey, I take your, your Instagram? No. Can I talk to your friend? No. Like we just can't. Can I enough. talk to your friend? <laughs> Put me on. No. Like yeah. Go ahead. You want to go to the movies? No. no. Are you free tonight? No. no. Like. 
Are you single? No. no. God damn, well, <laughs> is anything working in my favor? <laughs> so, yeah. I, like, like, and it's not even about men or women. It's about who has heard no the, the most. most. It's definitely been men. Right. Now, um, I got an article. I feel like that's safe. I feel like that's not misogynistic. It's not. I feel like, no, because women hear these statements and they're like, yo, like, no, no. And I'm like, exactly. That's it right there. <laughs> It's no, you guys keep saying no. That's all you guys say. It's cool. It's cool to say, not to say that it's not okay. Yeah, it's no, totally no, no. okay to say no. No, rejection, fine, whatever. If it and works when for you. you say no, the person should just be like, all right, fine, whatever. Put me on with your friend in, instead. Yeah, anyway. Please. One of your friends just say that. <laughs> So um being rejected never feels good in the moment, no matter how lucky you might feel about the near miss a week, a year, or a decade later. However, there's a gender difference in cultural expectations regarding acceptable responses to rejection. Men and women respond differently in cultural, culturally normative ways. Men tend to take rejection as a challenge to their masculinity or an insult to their perceived place in the social hierarchy. Women are likely to feel emotionally hurt by a rejection and to assume that there is something lacking in them that warranted the rejection or blame the person who did the rejecting but use self-soothing to get over the insult rather than lashing out as males might do. Mm. Steve. <laughs> I feel like I do um, see a lot of lashing out when guys get rejected. Men don't handle rejection. Most most men don't handle. I mean, some I guess. I mean, my case study is Jamaica Avenue, circa two thousand seven and two thousand six. Well, that was a that wasn't a good time to be on the Ave. It was not a good time to be on the Ave. Not at all. Yeah. Um, you know, some guys will ask a girl, "Hey, can I get your number?" And she'll say no, and then they'll say, fuck you, you Spongebob looking hussy. I don't need you anyway. <laughs> the quotes you hear on the Jamaican, on the Jamaican app. On and the that Jamaican was me censoring app, myself. Yeah. I censored that. That was... that was Because there's some nasty shit that's been said. Yeah. Hurtful um, things. Very hurtful things. Things indeed. that you didn't even mean because you just tried to scoop, so I don't understand why you said and that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, just you know she's bad. You know she's bad. You know she's bad. You know We're she's on not the like You know her leggings... Are nice and the, and, the, and the jeggings are nice and then she has no back pocket. Oh, jeggings! Oh, hey man, I hated jeggings. Oh, six. <laughs> what oh. do you mean you were six? Oh six, oh six, two thousand six oh. on the scene. Not me. I, I hated jeggings, jeggings from the inception. Yeah, jeggings are stupid. If you wore jeggings, I'm and not judging. Smooth, but my cousin calls them smooth booty jeans with no pockets, with no back pockets. <laughs> <laughs> just was wild smooth booty and though. you would see the color fade on the ass part wow. every time they washed it they know what they're doing with them jeans let me tell you or sat down on a bus <laughs> they know what they're doing they know what they're doing no back pocket no what back were you pocket. thinking what were you thinking <laughs> you need a back pocket they know, they know. <laughs> they have pocketbooks um yeah man it, it, it is true men don't handle rejection well but they hear rejection more but I feel like... Do you think we don't handle it well because we hear it more? Yeah, I feel like at a certain point in time, it's just like... <laughs> it's just like, oh! At a certain point in time, it goes back to like the part where you said like like how women are introspective on it. Like men are yeah. just probably just being introspective. Like, damn, I keep hearing no. <laughs> it really must be me. <laughs> like, So like they're like probably most, just flash out. Most times it is us when we hear no, though. It's never been me. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, rejection is a real thing. I, I, I always just played it safe. I was so afraid of rejection mm -hmm. that I just, I, I, I used to take very high percentage of such. What was the high? <laughs> Very high percentage, right? I mean, the high percentage shot could be seen also as... Well, okay, let me explain my high percentage shot because my high percentage shot means like... A low percentage. No, never, never, <laughs> okay. never. High percentage shot means like, yo, my chances of, of success is greater because... We've made the right eye contact. We've had the right kind of, you know what I mean? So like Initial I was never, like in the mall. I'm in the same way. Right. I'm, I was never right. in the mall. Like that's another thing too, right? Like men, you're having a tough time of rejection. Maybe stop putting yourself out there. Like, like you don't, like take a better shot, right? Like I feel like in the mall, like I was never the guy to go scoop joints at the mall. That was never my bag because I, I could never muster enough courage to see a shorty walk by and pull up and, and just say, hey, what's up? What's going on? That was not my pocket. It's happened to me here and there. It's definitely not anything I've enjoyed doing. Not at um, the time. And then the results were always bad for me. Yeah, yeah. They always end because, like, what do you? This is so I. I was working this past weekend, right? 
and we had somebody come in that was giving out like uh, juices, like juice, juice company, juices, healthy juices, all that shit. Good juice. It was good juice. Shout it was delicious. Out. Delicious juice. Shit, Shout I forgot the, I forgot the name ah. of the company. And I'm about to shade the person that was there. So I don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Let it go. <laughs> um, but then I saw this person, right? Uh, it was a girl. Like, cute girl. Um, young girl. So I was just thinking to myself, uh, like... Trevor gave a re- you gave a rejection out? Huh? You gave a rejection out? No, I didn't give a rejection okay. out. But, like, there was, a like, a good um, professional interaction. And then I just thought about myself as a younger person, right? Like, if I was her age, if I was, like, in my 20s or whatever... Like, would I, would I want to, like, holler or, or approach? And then my 35-year-old brain kicked in, and I was like, what are the factors that I factor into whether or not I want to be with somebody that I didn't factor into back when I was, like, 23, 24, 22, or whatever like right. that, right? So I noticed she had tattoos on her knuckles. Not for me. So I was like, there's one here, 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 and here. Not for Boom. me. Boom. All right. Got nothing... F- Got nothing for you. I don't even have a single ear pierced. I got nothing for anybody that has a neck tattoo or a tattoo on their knuckles. Nothing. I don't. Tattoos. Unless I, it's Cardi. Anywhere. Yeah, whatever. Tattoos anywhere else, I, I, I'm, I'm okay with. Maybe even the tramp stamp I'm okay with, but on your knuckles, you from, on your neck. You from Rochdale. You love the tramp. Chill. <laughs> Relax. I was in Rochdale the other day. That's why I thought about it. Anyway. Um, and then I also noticed she had like this keychain thing on, and it said... I love to do drugs on the keychain. So I was like, "What? Give me, give me more about this shorty. Was she black, white, Spanish? She was like, she looked mixed, with like black and black and white, or black and black and Spanish. Okay, little little mulatto, little, <laughs> little mulatto action. Pull up in my hood, best dress. I've been singing that song all day. I had to get it out. I apparently you did. I got it. Go. Okay, you feel better now? I mean, yeah, best dress. <laughs> uh, but then I was thinking like. That's like that would turn out bad. Like if I was like 23, 24 and just went off that initial reaction, that would turn out bad because then I would find out the story about how she got knuckles on, like <laughs> tattoos on her knuckles. And I would find out where she why she wears like a keychain that says, I do drugs or I like to do drugs. And then I'd end up in some like project building with 50 niggas in an elevator that all smell like tobacco. And I wouldn't want to be there. I know. Because I've been there. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've been there. Yeah, we've all been play. We, let me see. We've all we've all been to places that we shouldn't have been for one reason. To see, <laughs> for one reason, <laughs> <laughs> risking our life, limb, the, the 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 condition of our vehicle for one reason. What is the riskiest? Probably just being in the Bronx for me has been the riskiest. Uh, me's been the Bronx and the pink houses in Brooklyn. Oh, you was <laughs> <laughs> like at night, <laughs> at night. No. We're like 75 niggas just outside. <sighs> and me taking that walk through those doors in that elevator for one reason. I can't. I wouldn't do that one. <laughs> I wouldn't do that one. The ultimate was good enough for me. <laughs> the ultimate was good. Sure, do you live where? Nah. No way. Not going to the pink houses of Brooklyn. There's niggas there and they have guns. They do have guns. Yeah, I seen the music video. <laughs> Bow! They love my style. You know what I mean? Send me to Addy, yelling them, gunning them down. Send me to Addy, I'm gonna slide. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't want any of that. Don't send me that. In BK. No. No, I anyway, back to rejection. Back to rejection, yes. Yeah. Um men have three dominant and demanding roles in life: provide, protect, and prove their power. Um, there's a lot on anyone's shoulders in a world of competition for scarce resources in tandem with the presumed status that power can bring. Individuals with limited ability to call on inner self-regulating resources to rely on intrinsic rewards can lash out with unhealthy bids for power and dominance through violence and vengeance. So a lot yo, of- yo, 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 that was so deep. It was, right? Violence and vengeance. Violence and it vengeance. It sounds like a fucking movie. It does, because, I mean, you see, like, men who have witnessed violence or been victims of violence are more likely to see violence as an acceptable means to an end, which is why I don't feel like I'm ever going to beat my kids. Um, in their kids, in their in their eyes, life is a background. There's a battleground that supports. I don't think I'm gonna beat my kids either, though. Yeah, I'm pussy. That's another reason. But, but like, you're gonna get a little, you're gonna get a little, little pop, little pop on a hand, little pop on the butt. Until until you get old enough, it won't be like a full like nah, movie like, scale spanking I don't session. Think my dad knows how heavy his hands are. I think any. I don't think any dad does. No, nah, I gotta talk to that nigga. Like, yo, boy, <laughs> you you swing that. <laughs> 
Um, Heavy hands. And the thing is, like, with guys, like, we feel like when we're rejected, we're losers. And it says being branded a loser can be a blow on the sense of self that individuals with fragile egos or hypersensitivity to rejection simply cannot withstand without one of two responses, shame or out of proportion retaliation, such as the tragic pattern of adolescent males turning to homicidal violence in response to rejections that seem too big to handle. That's crazy, right? Jesus. Yeah. So who handles rejection better? I guess women. <laughs> I guess the joints. I mean, women do. <laughs> nah, well, based on this article, that was, that was OD. I think the toxic- I've never been rejected and went to vengeance. No, but that's, the thing is, is like, there are men who probably grow up in much more violent settings than we have. Of course. And their initial reaction to rejection is, you rejected me, I'm a loser now, I gotta prove my power. And they prove their power, whether it's like through physical or like assaulting or revenge or, words. or shit like that or harsh Mainly words. words. Mainly words. Yeah. Like, I actually, as you were reading this, I was thinking, I was like, yo, rejection doesn't really end um, after you get into a relationship because now you just, you know what I mean? Like, because think about it, right? Like, you, <laughs> there's a lighter note, but it's nice. Remember that perfect day you were talking about last week? Yeah. Perfect, perfect day. So everything is all added up except. Yep. After Julius Randle had the quadruple double, uh huh, you get nothing. You trying to get some cheeks, but wifey's not in the mood, so you put yourself out there and you get rejected. We had to learn how to how to handle that as men because like we feel entitled to like that's supposed to happen whenever we want blah 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 blah. blah. But like yeah, we'll handle handle hand a lit. <laughs> <laughs> hand the lit, yes. Yo, yo, oh my gosh. Yeah, we will. We will definitely take care of it, but we'll still be very upset. We will that be. That we're even at that point that I'm now in the bathroom handling. <laughs> Hand. The, handling. The rejection. rejection. <laughs> and now you're knocking on the door talking about, what are you doing in there? <laughs> well, you just rejected me five minutes ago. What the fuck do you think I'm doing in there? I'm getting it off. I had to. Handling it my way. You want me to sleep tonight? Yeah. <laughs> I was trying to get a peaceful night's sleep on this perfect day. But yeah, even like, so like, I, like to this point, like, rejection doesn't end at trying to scoop a girl or or trying to uh, trying to have a conversation or, it, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. You have to handle rejection on all levels better. You, you go for a job and if you didn't tell you no, it, it, you can't. Lash out. Lash out. Yeah, you're right. You and then, but women, we, we, what we just read as far as like women, they take rejection and they, they look internally like, what did I do wrong? But like, like, how did I fuck up? I feel like that's also, not, I feel like that's so heavy. It's very heavy. Take that off, shorty. You don't and have to I take think, that on because now you're sad for the rest of the day. So yeah, I think we got to take different parts about how we handle rejection and kind of like mold them together yeah. into this like rejection monster about mm. how we like tackle rejection so much better. I like that. Let's, as let's far create as a men. rejection smoothie. We're going reje- to re- create a rejection smoothie. Yeah. Next week, we're going to come back to you guys with an action plan of how to, how to handle rejection. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Indeed. But until then. Until then, no acts of vengeance. Don't lash out. Don't take it in. Don't take it in internally. And understand, everybody gets rejected every single day. Yeah. it's just the way of it's life. It's all about how you handle it. Yeah, how you handle it. All about how you handle it. What? Indeed. What? So up next, of course, we've got sports, 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 sports. We gotta get a better sports intro. What? I need. We need like some music. That's so much better. Anyway, <laughs> can you help me find something? No, I like sports. I like sports. Okay. I just wanted music. I like okay. sports. Sports. Okay. I just wanted some. I wanted. You know, we'll you work been, on some music for you next. Had, you had the ESPN. You were singing the ESPN t- tune a little while ago too. I don't know if you peeped. Da na na da na na. No, the some, other one. Which one? They have. They have they have they, We'll play it back. Okay. But you were singing, like low key. I was thinking people, you were singing like some, <laughs> some ESPN joke, but it wasn't the dinner. Was so um, on the sports front, NFL playoffs are in action sports, right now. Sports, sports, NFL sports. playoff action. So the Ravens win. Lamar Jackson gets his first playoff win. Rooting for Lamar. Black QBs, you know, we're here for him. Let's go, baby. Always rooting for Lamar Jackson. Um, you are now 30 playoff wins away from Tom Brady. <laughs> Let's go. Only 30, Let's right? Go. Only 30. Only 30. Only 30. And maybe like. 15 away from Joe Montana. Let's go, yeah. man. More wins. You got it. Uh, Brady and the Buccaneers win their playoff game. Well, we knew what it was. Against the up. Washington football team. We yeah, knew, pretty know, much. A.B. A.B. got a touchdown pass. Got a touchdown a. catch in that, uh, in that, um, in that game. Um, Street just saying A.B. Is, um, is the key for the Saints win. 
this weekend coming up. I think the Bucks beat the Saints. I'm, I'm sorry. The key for the Bucks to win the Bucks to win, the Saints, yeah. yeah. I think the Buccaneers beat the Saints. Yeah. I do. I but which is so sad though. Sad for what? For Drew Brees and them. He's washed up. Nah. Yeah. I mean, he just came back from like breaking all his ribs. Exactly. That's just, the definition of washed up. Not having no no ribs that work. But I'm I'm, I'm talking about the last two seasons that they the last two playoffs that they had. They've been like you know heartbreaking, heartbreaking, heartbreaking so fashion. It would be it would be really really sad to get to this point yet again and not go far. Eh, I don't care. I think Drew Brees is washed up. I think he's a little maggot ish. Like huh? He's a little maggot ish. Oh, you're like any anyone. And he was talking and about Thomas Brady is not MAGA, MAGA cat. Oh, absolutely, he is. All right, so but Tom Brady's kind of walked that. Sub- pick your MAGA right now, Drew, Tom, Drew or Tom. <laughs> Tom, but Tom's kind of walked Tom. it back in the past few years. Tom. He's kind of walked it back. Same thing with Belichick. Like, I, love, I like, love the blacks. Tom is that is that guy. That's how Tom walks it back. Tom, I was like, I don't, I don't look at Tom Brady and see a racist. I don't either. He's married to a Brazilian. Per, yeah, yeah, they black. Brazilians <laughs> are black. Yeah. You guys she are black. is the furthest thing from black looking, but yeah, she's <laughs> she is Brazilian. Um the Rams win, which was an upset, because the Rams had their backup QB and then Jared Goff literally was playing with one hand. What happened to Goff? What's his injury? He hurt his um he like broke something in his hand, like a few bones in okay. his hand. And then he most recently had surgery. So, so he, plays. he was, you know, so he had to because the the backup had a concussion. So he had to come to the game and win the game. He got right. Huh? I didn't. I didn't see any of these. Yeah, they right? won the game. Yeah, I it's, know they won, but they, like I want to know, like he got right with the hand or like. No, his won. hand is still fucked up, but the defense was really good, and okay. Russell Wilson looked like doo doo. Yo, I'm very disappointed in Russell Wilson. You know who else is disappointed? Sierra. Yeah. Guess what? He didn't get any goodies that night. <laughs> <laughs> so those are good. Those are premium goodies. Those are premium goodies. That, she was my favorite. Skinny chick. You know how premium they are? He doesn't pull out. That's how premium they <laughs> no, are. He has not pulled out <laughs> ever. Since he was like, yo, I'm I'm setting up camp here. Yep. Future indeed. who? <laughs> Give me your son too. I, I well, you got kid. I'll Give me your son too. <laughs> yo, future son is a is a stud. <laughs> he be work, he be doing all Russell's workouts. Dropping back in the pocket, oh, stepping in the octagon. God. Whatever. Oh, he's your son. Good Give me your son too. <laughs> <laughs> Good goodies. Wow. Steelers lose. Corvette, Corvette. <laughs> Yo, Juju. <laughs> I don't know why, but this season will always like Steelers did great. Ten and zero, right? Or yeah, ten and zero, and then one one and five. Um, this season will always be remembered as a season that the Steelers didn't make it because Juju was dancing on players' logos. Juju was wilding. Corvette, Corvette. <laughs> he was killing all of shit. He was. This he a, was really <laughs> killing. All of shit. This is a video of him like during the game where he just couldn't help himself and like he was lined up <laughs> right before right before Ben snapped the snapped the uh, snapped the ball and he was just like dancing. He was getting some TikTok shit off in the middle of a blowout, in the middle Excuse of being me. down like thirty five to nothing. He was getting his shit off. Young kid, this is like he got ADD or something. <laughs> yeah, he's there's a, something wrong. He's really like a young kid, and I, and, I, and I hate like that. This is how it's gonna be remembered, but it will be remembered as the season. I mean, it's the good Pittsburgh to have Steelers fun. started really good. And then they got disrespectful and cocky, and this is what happens. Like, like it would have been cool if none of the distractions were there. But on the flip side, shout out to the Browns. First shout out to the Browns in twenty five years. In twenty five years, I know I Braun is happy. It's, it's their first. It's their first road playoff win since nineteen sixty nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Freaky. that's sick. Hey Amen. Shout out to Cleveland Browns for advancing. Jarvis Landry, love him, stud. Yeah. Damn, Odell. Wish you were here. I mean, this just proves Odell isn't as good as everybody thinks he is. Um, that's not what it proves. It does. Football is not a football is not a sport that's impacted by one player alone, so it does not prove that Odell is not as good as he well, was. He's just but injured. You take, but if you take away one, there are a lot of like scenarios in football where you've taken away one player, one star receiver, and that team has like gone done really well. Whether it's a receiver, or offensive tackle, like it's not it's not a game that's dependent upon one person. I mean, the quarterback has most of the influence, but. I mean, it's kind of telling. Like all the years that Odell's been in the in the league, not one team he's been on has won a playoff game. I gotta see if that's true. Yeah, they went on that boat with uh, Victor Cruz and Trey Songs the year that the Giants made it. This nigga was on the who was I think Victor Cruz had on Timberlands on a yacht. That was a sick. <laughs> that was, he sometimes I like I like his fit sometimes, but sometimes he'd be wrong. And none of them had shirts on, and there were no women present. So take that for uh, for you, for what you want to take it for, bro. Come on, don't do that. Yeah, and his and then in the in the playoff game with the Giants, he dropped a touchdown pass from Eli. Stop it. So maybe you know Odell's not the not the franchise saving person that we think he is. 
I mean, well, and now he's coming off a bad injury next year, so we probably get cut. I'm not happy about that. I'm just saying, like, he's not all this cracked up to be. Sure, glazing that over. You know that Odell and Drake have special places in my heart for light skin niggas. <laughs> Anyway, NBA. Why are you sick? NBA. NBA. I just don't think that we, like, listen, I'm very happy for the Browns. I'm mad that Odell's not a part of this. Um, and I hope that he recovers well. Is that okay? Is that fair? No, it's fair. I definitely hope he recovers well. But I don't think you need him. And I don't think you need to pay him all the money he's making. Man. And I, and I think it's just more evidence that in NFL history, you pay a wide receiver a ton of money and you don't win. Listen, man, that's how shit goes sometimes. Yeah. Who do you got winning the Super Bowl? Early predictions. Chiefs. It's a, it's a Chief thing. Chiefs. It's a Chief thing? Absolutely. Cool. Patty Mahomes, man. Pat Mahomes. Take him to the NBA. What you got? A lot of people got COVID. What you looking for? Kyrie? Where are you, Kyrie? Anybody, anybody seen? I misplaced the Kyrie. Bro. Anybody seen my Kyrie? <laughs> <laughs> Where is Kyrie Irving? Like Where family in the, the world day. is... Kyrie Thomas. Irving. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Kyrie sus. Nah, it's, you know, that's how you really feel. <laughs> I just think, I just think, listen, man, there's how many, 200, 200 plus employees that are active players in the NBA. Everybody else is behaving. Behave. The thing is, like, I don't even want to compare him to other players who are playing. I want to compare him to all the arena workers. I want to compare him to all the coaches. So everybody else that needs to make a living and doing their that's job. out here doing their job. I get it. Listen, if you need to take a game off for personal reasons, that's good. But you and your coach need to be on the same page. Like Steve Nash is out here saying he hasn't heard anything from you. Doesn't yeah. know what the fuck is going on. Send a text. Send Yo, a text. It's, it's, it's really not that hard. Everybody has to do it. I don't know. Just Regardless not. of what you're going through. If you have a family member die, if you have a mental health issue, you got to send a text. He has a Jesus complex, I think. He thinks he's, he thinks he's, he really thinks he's like, he's bigger than, like, he thinks he's bigger than life itself. He's above these, he's I a, guess, he, like, no, he's above conditions. He's above everything. You have to hear him on this interview. He thinks he's just smarter than everyone. He's the best at everything. He just really thinks he's above everyone. And that, to me, is his fucking issue. Because you and I have played sports, organized sports. We know that there's a coach in place. The, the, the higher you go in your profession or in this sport, you're going to have coaches, GMs, people you have to answer to. The fact that you think that you cannot come to work because you don't feel like it, brother, that's just not how life works. I understand that. Listen, like, I don't want anybody to be a slave to their job. Don't be a slave. Regardless of you're an NBA player or a professional athlete or if you work at the bank. Don't be a slave to your job. We have a contract. We signed a contract. I'm, you're but not a you got to communicate. You can communicate if you want, but we have a contract. You have an obligation. You've signed when you signed your your bag for hundred mil, thirty mil, whatever yeah. mil. You signed that you were gonna play games. So I don't give a fuck, honestly. If you don't, <laughs> yeah, Yo, you upset? Yes, because it's like ridiculous. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Like, it's like, what, like, what do you mean? Kyrie's reasoning for not playing in tonight's game. I just didn't want to play. I just didn't want to play. And then did you see that I did that today? Kyrie I was at a mask. family birthday party. I'm, I, I don't care about that. That's the smear campaign now. That's smear. Don't smear That's my man. That's the smear campaign. Because now you're going to try to uh, quarantine him for 14 days. He's going to miss more games. And we're trying to get him to show up to one. Tonight they're playing, they're playing the, uh, the Jazz. Right? You're, Spencer Dinwiddie's out. Nigga, you need to play, bro. You, I, I don't like it. I don't like it. You're dragging. You're dragging. Like, I don't like it. I don't like it either. I just, need him, I just need him to shoot his coach's text. That's all I need. If you got to take time to take, take like if like these these events of uh, of, of the Capitol and Jacob Blake's police officers uh, getting off because America's America. If you feel like that's affecting you emotionally, you can't go to work. It is what it is. So take a mental health day. It's excuse. It's take a mental health day. But you can't have your coach on TV saying he doesn't know what's going on. Or it's he hasn't not professional. Heard, or, or he hasn't heard from you. It's not professional. It's not professional. It's all spade to spade. No. It's not professional. I don't agree. I don't support it. And I really want to like Kyrie. I want him to do I, like I want but to. The Nets are still going to keep winning without him. They lost the other day to the Sixers. And they didn't even have. The Sixers didn't even have. No, ben they beat si the Sixers. Oh, that's right. They, uh, yeah, Joe yeah, Harris had like 28. It was the other way around. It was the other way around. Yeah. I stand corrected. But they lost the other day to the Thunder. Sorry. They did. With and KD then, back. And, they don't, and, and, who, and who's the Thunder? We don't even know. Kyrie, show up to work, bro. What does it say that they're winning games without KD and Kyrie in the lineup? Uh, 
Levert, and Karis Levert is going for 40. Yeah, because he's like that. We knew that. Yeesh. We knew that. They was they were in the they were going to the playoffs last year. They were they were a team. Yo, Julius had 30 the other night. <laughs> Tell me more. I'm just saying. Julius had 30 the other night. Best guy in the best best ball player in New York right now. I uh, agreed. Yeah. What's he getting his 30 off? How does, how does he how does Julius get his buckets? I don't He's watch been getting his buckets off mid-range. He's been getting them off the mid-range and driving that to the bucket. Flash? Huh? Should have cash. That's a lot better than it was last year. Okay. A lot better off the okay. off the back to the basket. I He's love getting it, to the man. line a lot. I love it. I love it. He used to be a Laker man. I got love for Julius. I got love for Julius. He's getting to the line a lot, so he is, and he's playing really good defense too. Yeah, really good defense. Good, indeed, yeah, absolutely. Big fans worldwide hype. Ve- I mean, no, you should. We should. I don't think we should be hype. I just think. Once no, you, I think you should. I think once you good. see, don't do that. Don't don't put that. Don't don't do that. Don't get me to that place <laughs> where I'm just gonna be rejected again <laughs> by them. Obi. Huh? Where's Obi? Who fucking knows? I think he's wearing some ripped jeans somewhere on the bench. Did he get hurt? Yeah, he got hurt. What's the injury? I don't know. I don't remember. I hate it all. Something stupid. I hate it all. COVID is raging across the NBA. You know how I feel about I this. I remember last time that COVID was raging against the NBA. They shut the whole shit down. They said no more fun for no one. Who, who is this? Rudy Gay? I mean, Rudy Gobert? You have COVID? Shut down the whole league. Donovan Mitchell, you're touching people. Everybody, everybody just get out. And they shut it down. I don't know where we're going from here. But games were postponed today. Uh, games were postponed Sunday. A Sunday. Mm-hmm. Um, players are getting COVID more frequently. I actually had a thought yesterday. Do you make the the vaccine mandatory for players? Is that something that we can do? Yes. I like that idea. A private company can do that. I like that. I like that. I don't know how the players will react to that. But ultimately, if someone puts, hey, listen, do you want to continue getting paid? Right, because I think we've all kind of said this. I think I think no, everyone has said like with in regards to the vaccine, if I need to go, if I need to do it for work, I would do it. You should just do it regardless. You should do it regardless. I'm I'm in after I'm in, but I feel like a lot of people who are on the fence were like, well, I'll do it for work. So if the league goes, hey, listen, we want to get all our players vaccinated before we get back to games. The only way how do things. How are going to react? Some will be okay with it, and some won't. I think yeah. some will make an uproar about, you know, it's my choice. I shouldn't have to do this. Yes. That's the um, thing about it. Like, that's what, that's what I'm getting at. Their choice would now be kind of suppressed because it's mandatory to play. These are all, listen, Twitter's a private company. They can do what they want. NBA is a private company. They can do what they want. If you want to work for them, you got to go along with whatever their regulations and guidelines are. It's just the way, it's, it's, it's just the, way the world works when you work for somebody else. It's a fact. It's a fact. It is. You knew what it was when you signed up. Drake Bar. Hey, oh, wow. <laughs> Cutting edge. Real, you know, generational bar right there. Changing the whole game. Yo, the <laughs> hate that you have for Drake. Speaking of which, we are halfway, almost halfway through the month. It is time for some certified lover boy. When do you think you're getting that out? I don't know, man. I'm fucking. You really are you just like checking your phone every day? Not every day. I'm just... <laughs> Every day, like you're waiting for like a, a a chick that rejected you to text you back. Yo, those were the worst days. Those were the days. You check your phone to make sure it still works. You got service. Yo, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna confess right now. It's my battery charged, man. <laughs> I used to do this: open my phone, type in Josh Cloudin, and text, "Hey, what's up?" to see if text would come through. <laughs> all right, that's all. That's all y'all getting for me today, though. That's all y'all getting. Yo, you can you can call my phone see if it's. Yo, hit me real quick. Hit me real quick. Let me see if it's working, if I got service. (laughs) And it wasn't until like five or six years of doing that stupid ass dumb shit, I realized that, yo, they're not going to text you. (laughs) They got the message. They just don't give a fuck. Okay? They got the message. They showed it to their girls. They were like, this thing is still trying to text me. Yo, do you think you ever made it to the group chat? Absolutely. (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) I live in a world of out of (laughs) sight. Out of sight, out of mind. If I had never seen that I was in a group chat, I have never been in a group chat. Absolutely, because they made it to mine. (laughs) So (laughs) it's less. (laughs) And so much less. Yo, uh, listen, if you ever put me in a group chat, man, that is a violation of my rights. No, it's not. It is. It's not. You sent the message, right? You sent the message, and you checked your phone to make sure it was sent. (laughs) And I texted myself (laughs) to see if it went through. I deserve it. (laughs) You call Sprint, you're like, yo. I sent her this message like a like three days ago. <laughs> I used to call AT and T, 
My service is acting real spotty. It picks uh, and chooses uh. what it sends messages. <laughs> Can I get a new phone? Yeah, everybody can get through except the shorty from that party the other night. <laughs> yeah, my mom's called me about five times. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> still talking to moms. Still, still talking to my mother. Yeah, no, man. Rejection is uh, tough. Yeah, Sprint Lady. Yeah, she said she was going to call me back, but I haven't gotten anything. Nothing. All right, y'all. So before we go, we did get a very lengthy comment on one of also our latest lengthy latest, <laughs> latest also YouTube lengthy. videos. We love it. We love our commenters. So definitely thank you. Uh, the username is J1900. Thank you, J1900, for your contribution yeah, and your engagement. I love the creativity on your name, too. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Good shit, bro. So the comment was on our Candace Owens video about Netflix when she attacks Netflix for supposedly being, you know, segregationists yeah, or yeah, whatever yeah, yeah. you want to describe it as. Um so she says, what Candace Owens meant, I love it when people like to tell you what people mean yeah. instead of what they actually say. Yeah. Uh, what Candace Owens meant was they shouldn't be a separate category for black people to showcase their work. They should stand equally with the rest of the movies on Netflix. Boom. Equally would be great if equality existed. It doesn't. We've established that. So but continue. it doesn't. All right. Next sentence. Your reasoning in which is good for black people to have a separate category as to make it easier to find stuff black people made can be applied to justify the racists in the past yep. who segregated black and white beaches, for example. Yeah, I've never been to a black beach in my life. I've been to Jones Beach. I've been to Long Beach. I've never been to a black beach. Continue. So racist laws could have argued by your logic that having a separate black beach gives a space for black people to go find other black people or black restaurants segregated from black people to find food culturally eaten by blacks. I'm offended by her use of black yeah. so many times. I now need to know, what are you, Jay Perez? Her or him, whoever Jay 1900 is. First off, with the whole beach thing, um, there were no black beaches. We just couldn't go to the fucking beach. <laughs> There were no black beaches. Never there were been. black. There were probably some black pools. Yeah, there's never been. But there was no. There's, there's like, never been. What world? What black beach did we get? Tell me. The, I want actually. I want to go there. That shit sounds. <laughs> that like sounds lit. Time, just lit. I would there's love to go beach. to a black beach. Yeah, yo, J nineteen hundred. The music and the to, food must oh be my, amazing. The cultural food, of course, eaten by blacks. Oh my gosh. J Perez, you know what it is. Why don't you call him J Perez? I don't know. J nineteen hundred. J nineteen hundred. Yeah. I'd listen if you can. In the next comment, let me know where there's a black beach. Yeah. I'm going to be at that black beach this summer. Yeah, that'd be an amazing time. Oh, my goodness. I would love for my, my kids to experience that as well. <laughs> um, And then she says, Candace Owens is saying there shouldn't be black or white beaches. It should just be beaches. I agree. Uh, yeah. Okay. There are just beaches. Yeah. Always have been beaches. Yeah. We just couldn't go to them. <laughs> Candace Owens is saying, oh, I read that already. It should not be black or white restaurants or black or white movie theaters. You're right. You're right. But we couldn't go to a lot of movie theaters. So you know what we had to do? We had to make black ones. They also didn't even want us to be in movies. So you know what we had to do? Make our own. They anyway. They us. Um, Whatever. It should just be restaurants and theaters, unlike in the past with that segregation. It should be a lot of things, J1900. I think J1900 is trying to make it seem like we're the ones that wanted to be segregated. <laughs> I'm not even feeling for the segregation. When all we want is that our movies... Highlighted. Be highlighted because they haven't been for the past hundred years. Yeah. Put it next to the other ones. And then this is the best part. You guys clearly misunderstood what oh, she yeah. was trying to say. Did you clearly misunderstand? I think I was on the money. I think I was I think I understood I also. I think we were on the I think money. I clearly understood. I think I think we clearly handled that topic well. Yeah. Thanks anyway, for thank you for the engagement. Yeah, we love it. Thank you for the comment. Everybody should leave comments. Keep them coming. Absolutely. And We'll reply just like this to most of them. Yeah. I don't know, maybe. To the if, ones that... To get the people going. To get the people going, yes, absolutely. Um, thank you, J1900. Yeah. Indeed. Pull up in my hood, best dressed. That, that's your response to the comment. Okay, that's good. <laughs> that's good, too. <laughs> that's awesome, also. <laughs> I don't know what J1900 even looks like. No, I don't either. And I don't want to make fun or, or, or guess. I'll do that off camera. Um, <laughs> so uh, for Josh it's Trev once again hit the socials hit the YouTubes leave some comments we'll highlight them and uh, peace out peace deuces out.